Good morning, everyone. Welcome, welcome. Let's gather together. How's our volume here? Can you hear me all right in the back? Raise your hand if you can't hear me. Welcome, everyone. Those are good to see you. Well, good morning. This is an exciting day. Thank you. Thank you. Very exciting morning. For those who haven't met me, my name is Jeremy Robbins. I'm the head of Zen Preparatory School. And it is amazing to see everyone out here on this gorgeous morning beautiful carbon day. Let's make some noise, everyone. Thank you, thank you. And I believe we are streaming this event as well as recording it. So if there are folks who weren't able to make it today, rest assured they're able to take part in these proceedings. It is with distinct pleasure I preside over this ribbon-cutting ceremony as head of school of both REM prep and option. This event is a celebration of neurodiversity. The notion that learning differences are a manifestation of the inherent variation and design of the human mind. At Brem, we believe in the growth mindset. The idea that talents and skills can be developed through hard work and deliberate practice, good strategies, and input from others, including coaches, mentors, teachers, independent living counselors. The BREM community is a mission-driven place of learning and growth. BREM's mission is to empower students with learning disabilities and differences to recognize and optimize their potential throughout their lives. We exist to provide growth and independence across multiple domains of learning to rejuvenate hope, awaken potential, and broaden future possibilities for youth and young adults with learning disabilities and differences. When a young person's potential goes unmet, there is a cost to the individual and that person's family, and there is a cost to the community and to our society. We believe that our world will be more just when young people with learning differences can access the right learning environment. This new building behind me is the welcome center to the unique community we create at Brem and Option. It is the welcome center to this future we envision. We're in our 39th year. We are poised to launch the next phase of growth and development of our program and campus, supported by all who share in the dream that Carol Brem envisioned in 1982. Now we all know that the COVID-19 pandemic has presented challenges and disruptions to the past and this current academic year to all of us, our lives, our families and friends. Yet we are poised together to emerge stronger from this crisis. I would like to thank, first off, our staff. Students, young adults, let's make some noise for our staff here, <laughs> Options and Brem. Staff has stood by us this past year as we made arrangements and plans to open both programs in person safely. That was no easy feat. Thank you, staff. And throughout, we have staff who made contributions, direct donations for the capital campaign, those who elected to make payroll contributions in order to regularly support our foundation. Thank you, staff, again, for all that you give in support of our mission and in support of the students and young adults in our program and their families. Thank you, staff, once again. <laughs> I'd also like to recognize those who provided the leadership which brought us to this moment, many years in the making. We have those who've joined us here at this ribbon cutting event today to celebrate the community here in Carbondale to which Brem is connected. We are all together part 
of the Brem family. I would like to welcome, greet some of our friends uh, from the community, including Ronnie LaFord representing the city. Steve Mitchell. As well as our Chamber of Commerce, Tom Davenport. And Tom, thank you for helping us out with the ribbon and the scissors we'll see shortly. I would like to recognize uh, those who work closely with BREM through our construction process. Egemeyer and Associates are architects. John Christopher, Mark Dillon. Asetarian Eaton, of course, Rick Asetarian. Thank you. JNL Robinson, our general contractors. Throughout this process, in addition, to those I mentioned, we had subcontractors who worked on this job, and I thank all of them for the dedication and hard work they put in to making this a building that will last. So thank you to all uh, who were part of this project and helped to bring the building to completion. I'd also like to recognize our banking partners, the Bank of Carbondale, Pantera Bank, and Legions Bank. I'd like to recognize first our foundation board of directors, including Bob Kippers, our president, Mike Murray, Jordan Tate, Terry Douglas, Dan Maher, Stacy Tate, and Tom Weiss. Thank you to our foundation board. I'd especially like to recognize the Mahers who are here with us today, as well as Jordan Tate. And you'll hear from Jordan shortly. Our capital campaign leadership team includes David Gibbs as the chair. David, who was not able to be here with us today, to provide best wishes to our staff and our students and families. Bob Kippers, Mike Murray, Frank Paremski, Shaw Reed, Stacy Tate, and Craig Wolanski. I would also like to read the names of our capital campaign donor list, providing gifts to the foundation at $25,000 and above. Todd R. Broin, Margie DeHaan Summers, Tom Ferry, George A. Bates Memorial Foundation, James D. Gibbs, Allison J. Green, Chris Hackett, the Hurston Family Foundation, Charles F. Jacobs, Legacy Fund Community Foundation, Robert Kippers, Franklin Leiter, Dr. Jerry and Mr. Craig Schirmerhorn, Stacy Tate, Charlene Walsh, Tom Weiss, Mike Wojtowicz, the Woodland Foundation, and the last donor whom I'd like to um, recognize um, is the Elizabeth C. and James F. Zevers family, our major stakeholder in this campaign. It has been truly impactful for me to have a chance to get to know Tim Zevers, to learn more about his folks. And Tim told me that his folks were known to their family and friends as Jim and Betts, to learn more about Jim's life as a member of the Merchant Marine, inventions and patents and innovations, uh, and I'm very excited to welcome, on behalf of the Zevers family, Tim Zevers to come up and share a few words. Thank you so much, Tim. Thank you. Thanks, everybody, for being here. 
um, it's nice to meet you all and see you all. Um, uh, my mom was uh, worked for the Service Club of Chicago, which was a charitable uh, fund gathering and distribution group, and I, I often went around with her uh, on her missions and, and learned about charitable giving through her. And my, my dad was a uh, uh, graduate of the Merchant Marine Academy in Kings Point, New York, and a veteran, two tours in the Pacific, and, uh, and he dedicated his life to service of his country. And uh, I, I'm, I'm honored to uh, represent them both in their uh, in continued endeavors in helping people. Um, um, it's it's uh, a, a really tremendous thing what has been accomplished here. He was here, drove down with his van with his tools in the back, and he was working in here on the floor. Tim prepared the frame for the plaque and installed it himself. Of course, he's a tradesman by training. <laughs> and to me, it was a wonderful testament um, to Tim and his family's dedication and service to Brem, and also seeing their family's legacy carry forward. Uh, and as you come in and appreciate the plaque, um, I hope you can also picture uh, the care that went into its installation. Um, and my hope, spoken with Tim about this, is we can have some of the students and young adults in our program spend some time interviewing Tim, learn a little bit more about his folks, and in addition to the donor wall, uh, representing the names I mentioned, um, have some more information um, for our students and young adults to learn about the lives of Jim and Beth. Uh, inspiration um, to, to all of us. Um, now, you heard me recognize our staff before. Um, I would also like to recognize, and I'll call him up in a moment, uh, Director of Options, Scott Donovan, And Kristen Glenn, our clinical coordinator. <laughs> who serve as the leaders of our full options team of staff. Again, once again, let's make some noise for our options staff. <laughs> for those who don't know, the old options building just down the road on South Lewis Lane, uh, the staff has watched um, week by week, month by month, as this project has unfolded. Uh, we were gathered here, of course, for the groundbreaking uh, in September of 2019. Uh, staff and, and the students and young adults were able to come in and, and see the building uh, as the slab took shape, and then the panelized walls were installed. Um, but to be able to see the staff come in and enjoy for the first time the building with the furniture and the equipment outfitted uh, was a delight for me. Um, and I know the staff were thinking about the opportunities, the program, the way the students and young adults will benefit and enjoy the program. Um, so once again, um, thank you to our staff and Tim and the Zebras family, thank you for making that possible. In addition, I'd like to recognize uh, our support staff who work behind the scenes. Their work is so crucial and so appreciated, I thank. Charity Finley. <laughs> Terry Wilson. <laughs> Terry, who always works behind the scenes, and in addition to serving as my assistant, has stepped up to serve as our interim foundation director. <laughs> Terry, thank you for all your work. <laughs> Brenda Malone, <laughs> who is our new HR director and no um, no stranger to many folks here um, in the Southern Illinois region. Um, thank you, Brenda, for jumping right in and helping us with this effort. Um, in addition, Angela LeBlanc and Casey Pryor <laughs> providing the support to all of the students and staff and families and options. Thank you, Angela and Casey. I'm also excited to see you positioned uh, in your workstations here um, in the new building shortly. Um, and lastly, our facility staff, John Hayes, uh, and the facilities team, thank you for your work preparing the building today <laughs> and making sure we're ready for this event, as well as Tom in our IT department. Thank you, Tom Koffel. <laughs> With that, on behalf of uh, the staff, I call up our director of options, Scott Donovan, uh, and has a few words to share with you, so welcome, Scott. Thank you.
thank you for joining us. Uh, I did want to start by saying thank you to everyone for joining us in person and from afar with our technology. Um, options, optimizing potential through individualized ongoing nurtured success. Our mission is to empower students with learning disabilities and differences to recognize and optimize their potential throughout their lives. Again, thank you to everyone that joined us to help make this capital campaign a reality. To the Zebras family, to the Bremen Tate family, to everyone that's uh, here today and stakeholders from near and far. Um, this dream would not be reality if it wasn't for you and you will forever be in our hearts as we move our young adults towards independence for years to come. We celebrate this moment now, but we understand 30, 40 years from now, our young adults will be entering this building and will have the same energy as we, have, as we do right now. Not only were we able to complete the new options building, but we also made renovations across the BEM campus. Families from across the world will reap the benefit for years to come. This is a huge sense of accomplish, accomplishment to get this building completed, but now is truly when the work begins. Our young adults will be walking through these doors in a few short weeks, and that is when we, the realization will occur that we now have a state-of-the-art learning space to complement the most dedicated, passionate, and professional team any parent could wish for. It has been almost 34 years since Options has been on the Brems campus. We can say we are excited to have the synergy across both pro uh, programs would be an understatement. We also have deep roots in Carbondale and we're here to stay. We look forward to providing services to not only the students enrolled at Options, but our local community as well. I'd be remiss not to mention Shar Reed for her 32 years of service to Bremen Options. Her years of dedication to the students, ongoing vision of options, and passion to move students forward still resonate uh, deeply amongst the options team and myself. A special thanks to the Brem Foundation, the IT department, facilities, the options team, and a huge thanks to Jack and the Lawn Care and Landscape class for making this so beautiful. A lot of work went into this behind the scenes uh, to celebrate today, but again, for years to come. A quick speech by me, as you know, I'm not great in front of everyone. Uh, my work is always the passion I do behind the scenes. I'd like to conclude my speech with a special moment to recognize Carrie Walsh. Carrie Walsh was a student at Brem Preparatory School from 1989 to 1993. She graduated valedictorian in 1993 and then went to SIU where she received her BA in psychology in 1998. She then moved to Glen Ellen and attended College of DuPage where she received a library technician assistant certificate in 2001. Throughout these successes, Carrie continued to struggle with anxiety and obsessive compulsive disorder. She then returned to Carbondale and re-enrolled into the options program in 2002. Carrie truly enjoyed her independence, her friendship, and her work she made not only at options but within the Carbondale community. In 2010, Carrie underwent a bone marrow transplant for a blood disease in which she did not recover. It is in loving memory that for Carrie that we at options, her family dedicate this memorial and scholarship to her. Carrie's life was full of challenges every day and she battled to do simple things that made many of us took for granted, such as locking the doors and walking down the street without worrying about what others think. However, Carrie led a different life of fulfillment. She was a proud of her accomplishments she had at Bremen Options and she never stopped striving for better, much like the Options team. We're gonna go ahead and uh, place this plaque at the Weeping Cherry Tree at the northeast corner of the building. We also have a, a memorial scholarship in her name that we continue to grant to students. So thank you everyone for joining us today. <laughs> Jeremy, thank you. I'm gonna go. I'll place this. <clears throat> the goal of the Brem School Foundation has been to support the future of education for students and young adults with learning differences and disabilities by fostering student success and providing families the healing that they need. Brem broke ground on our campus just over there, May 11th, 1982. And the school opened in August 28th, 1982 with six buildings. This project here broke ground on September 20th, 2019, so that we can meet the needs of a growing demand 
so that we can reach more students while continuing to remain intentionally small. Bringing options into this building that's contiguous with the main campus offers the proximity, the efficiency, facilitating communication and collaboration across a unified and integrated dual program. At this time, I would like to call up on behalf of the foundation, a foundation board member, Jordan Tate, uh, who represents both the foundation and also the Brem family as Carol's granddaughter. She also happens to have with her Carol's great-granddaughter, uh, her daughter, Tara. Here, welcome, Jordan. Hello, guys. Thank you all for being here. Um, I guess I won't really introduce myself, but I am Jordan, um, Carol's granddaughter. And I have a few words to say on behalf of the family of Carol Brim, who founded the Brim Preparatory School. My mom, Stacy Tate, the chair of the Board of Trustees, she was very heart sick that she couldn't be present with you all today. She had a prior engagement um, that conflicted with this ribbon cutting, and she holds to, holds to her uh, engagements uh, very dearly. So, um, But we're thankful to all the decades of dedicated staff and families that have transformed this dream into a reality, and that we can now dedicate this building as a place of teaching and learning. May the minds and hearts of all who enter these doors be nurtured to learn and to grow. Thank you all. I'm also just going to give um, Robert Kippers, our chair of the foundation, president, I guess, of that foundation, sent a little statement as well that I'm going to read for him. So he says, on behalf of Brim and the Brim Foundation, we are forever grateful to our loyal and committed donors who enabled this building to be constructed. Oftentimes is a response to a loss. The best way to honor those who passed away from us is to hold dear the things that they held dear so that we may feel once again closer to them and preserve their stories. We owe it to them. So when the options program moves into this space in the next couple of weeks, it will offer such promise for young people to realize their dreams. And there will be something of Carol Brim, of Jordan's grandfather, C.E., her uncles, Tyson, whom we honored earlier this week with Tyson Brem Day here at the preparatory school, and Jack in that opportunity. There will be that of Jim and Beth Zevers. There will be that of Carrie Marie Walsh and so many others. Please join me in holding dear the dreams of all of those who were close to us, whom we have lost, especially if they valued education in which to nurture the strengths and inherent gifts of all young people who learn differently. If their potential to live out that dream was tragically rendered short, by giving back and thereby telling and retelling their stories, we rekindle that potential. At this time, I also want to give thanks to our students, both our prep school students at Brem and the students and young adults at Options. You've been looking around like I have, and I'm really proud of everyone for sticking with this long set of speeches here. And uh, I wanted to recognize um, our students. We have two from Options who are going to come up at this time and help us with the flag raising. So at this time, I'll we'll call up Mark D'Alessandro and Harrison Gertie. Is Harrison helping? Yes. All right. Mark and Harrison, come on up, guys. And I understand both of you guys are, are Eagle Scouts, correct? Yes. Correct. All right. Well, thank you for helping with this important moment.
Once again, thank you, Mark, and thank you, Harrison. At this time, we have one final important step that needs to happen, and uh, that is to cut the ribbon, because this is a ribbon cutting ceremony. Um, so Tom, thank you. Um, we're going to uh, call up again uh, Tim Zevers, uh, and Scott and Jordan and I, uh, and so we'll organize the cutting of the ribbon, and once we do that, uh, we are then going to conclude, and what will happen? Uh, we'll have groups come uh, in order to limit the density of our um, number of people inside the building at a time. We're going to have some groups for tours, um, and so we will invite up the chamber, our board members, and special guests um, for the first group, and um, and then uh, we'll we'll gather together um, our our own Brem and Options community. Um, I know that the Brem students may be eager and staff to have lunch. Um, so if you can't join the tour today, we'll have you come back through the tour later. Um, and there are refreshments and snacks uh, available for those who come in on the tour inside. Okay. All right. With that, okay. Yes, I will hold the ribbon. Ladies and gentlemen, before you leave, we do have a drone in case you haven't noticed. We are going to do a group photo. Uh, so if you can just turn and face across the streets, we are going to get a group photo momentarily. Uh, and then we'll begin to gather uh, with our uh, guests and board members for our first tour group. 